Hello? Oh, there we go. Hello! So my name's Sadie, Sadie Belsey. I'm a crafty person and miscellaneous chaotic human. And I'm gonna sew some things. I'm not actually gonna sew anything in this video. <laughs> Sorry. But today I'm gonna give an introduction to my exciting project. The other day I stumbled upon Foundations Revealed's competition. Now if you don't know Foundations Revealed, it was started by the glorious Kathy Hay. And if you don't know Kathy Hay, go away from this video and look her up immediately because she is fantastic. She started this awesome online resource for the making of historical clothing. And it turns out they're having a competition. So the deadline for this is February 2021. And the theme of the competition is once upon a time, not the Disney ABC show, but like a story kind of thing. So this means that basically you can pick any book character, um, any or poem or any character that comes from the written world. Um, uh, literary character, that's the term I'm looking for. And create an outfit for them. Everything you make, everything you wear in the outfit has to be handmade. Well, I think you can probably be allowed like, you know, shoes that you didn't make um i hope <laughs> so yeah i thought well i've just restarted my sewing journey so i thought i'd give it a go i'm entering at the apprentice level which is okay so apprentice is you have made your first couple of successful projects and now you are practicing and refining core skills such as seam types fabrics and getting to grips with the basics of fitting. I've never done any fitting whatsoever. So my like sewing background is I've basically been sewing for as long as I can remember, as long as I've been old enough to be trusted with a little plastic needle by my mum. But it's like, you know, sewing faces on felt or sewing little bags or just sewing my pieces of knitting together. Um, I made two dresses about Oh god, like eight years ago. <laughs> oh, I'm old. And they went pretty well, but then I kind of uh, slipped off the face of the earth in terms of crafting or, or doing anything that required any amount of confidence. So I'm starting again now. I got into watching people like Bernadette Banner and Morgan Donna and Rachel Maxey and of course Kathy Hay and they have inspired me to start up my sewing journey again. Lucky you! You get to come along and watch. Well I mean I suppose you don't have to but I really hope you do. Yeah so I'm gonna join in on this project, this journey. So what I am going to do for the competition is I'm going to make an outfit for the character Rincewind the Wizard from Terry Pratchett's Discworld books. Terry Pratchett is my absolute favourite author. Basically all of my audible thing is Terry Pratchett. Rincewind isn't necessarily my favourite character. Um, I'm a big fan of the City Watch series and Sam Vimes and all of those people and obviously the witches. Granny Weatherwax is just... Mm. So he's not necessarily my favourite character but I think he is a very distinctive character amongst people who know the Discworld and people who are vaguely aware of Terry Pratchett's work because he's got these striking red robes and the wizard hat of course uh, so I thought I'd, I'd give that a go. I also kind of want to bring a little bit of hobbit chic into this because J.R.R. Tolkien who wrote Lord of the Rings was a huge inspiration to Terry Pratchett and loads of fantasy authors. He was like the king of high fantasy so I kind of want to bring some of his influences in, specifically the female hobbit style, because this is going to be like a gender bending costume. I started watching the clip of Bilbo's birthday uh, when I was like researching, doing like little mood boards, and I love the whole like the the floofy sleeves and the the ruffled neckline and the like. It's not a kirtle, but it's that kind of thing where it's like the the sort of hard fronted bodice with the skirt. Oh, I just thought that looks amazing. Um, and Rincewind could definitely be a hobbit. He would love the hobbit lifestyle. Like, he may be a hero and he may be like super well traveled and go off on all these adventures, but he doesn't want to. He's very unwilling in all of these things. I think he'd enjoy hobbit life, just sitting peacefully, caring about food and, and rest and potatoes. <laughs> if you know, you know. So 
yeah, that's my inspiration. However, I also want to put a historical twist on this because I just think it's going to make it a little more interesting. It'll make the research a bit more structured. So I'm going to go for, <laughs> well, originally I thought medieval would be a good idea for this historical twist. My head was turned by a number of things. I'd look at a picture of robes and be like, ooh, they're pretty, oh, 17th century. It's fine, we'll do a 17th century outfit. And then I'd go, ooh, that pair of stays is amazing. Oh, it's 18th century. Well, okay, it'll be 18th century. So at this rate, we'll probably end up with the outfit being 1970s, but you know, I'd be okay with that. It'd certainly be a look. So at the moment, the historical inspiration for the outfit will be 18th century. And I'll get into the detail a bit more about specifically what makes the outfit 18th century in each separate video because I'm going to make a separate video for each like garment each layer of the outfit the things that we are going to be making for the outfit will be a shift so that's the underneath layer that's the very simple <laughs> it's basically gonna look like this with poofy sleeves and a gathered neckline but white and it just goes straight down it's like a very simple dress and this would have been the foundational layer so I'm gonna be making a shift That'll be the first thing. Then we're going to build it up to the next layer, which will be a pair of stays. <laughs> because nothing says beginner's project like a heavily boned precursor to a corset. <laughs> we're going to be doing it anyway. And then a skirt, sort of a petticoat type thing to go with the stays. On top of that, we're then going to go straight for the robes. So in the first book, The Colour of Magic, Rincewind is described as being clad in a dark red robe on which a few mystic sigils were embroidered in tarnished sequins. So we're gonna get to look up some fun magic sigils. Um, mm, I say robes. It should be robes because it's an academic institution, but I really wanna do a cloak. So as far as I understand it, the difference between robes and a cloak is that a robe has sleeves and looks very much like academia, um, like a judge, the kind of thing they wear. A wizardy, think Gandalf. And a cloak is very much more, it doesn't have sleeves, it just sort of, you know, ties up here. And then it's more like a ranger or adventurer, think Aragorn. I really want to make a cloak because it would be really cool, but I probably should stick to robes. I shall have a think, I shall have a debate. I will probably find some way of rationalizing making uh, a cloak. Because Rincewind's a traveller, right? He travels all over the place. He's like one of the most well-travelled people on the entire disc. So like, you know, a travelling cloak, that makes sense, right? So I'll probably do a cloak. And of course, the final thing will be the pointy wizard's hat. And I can't find the quote for this because basically all of my Rincewind Terry Pratchett novels are on Audible and it's much more difficult to search for a quote on Audible because you have to listen to the whole book rather than just flicking through. So I haven't got a quote for you, but <laughs> please take it on my authority that he also has a red pointy hat that says wizard spelt with two Z's that has also magical sigils and I believe a star or two. But then also we have that around his neck was a chain bearing the bronze octagon that marked him as an alumnus of the Unseen University. I do actually have some brass clay. I have silver clay as well, but obviously brass would get that bronzy color a bit more approximated than silver. So that could be an exciting little uh, diversion. That might be another video in and of itself. In terms of the historical element, it is very much going to be historically inspired not historically accurate and obviously very few things are truly historically accurate but i'm going to try and do things historically where i can but obviously the deadline for the competition is february the first of february as well so i've got a little over two months which you know sounds like a decent time but i just have a feeling it's not gonna be a decent amount of time considering i'm making like potentially six things so hmm um, what was I saying? It is completely gone. Uh, yes, okay, so it's gonna be historically inspired rather than trying to directly be historically accurate because I want to put a little bit of artistic license in this. Obviously for some bits I'm, I'm very much <laughs> pressed for time. That was what I was talking about, time. <laughs> so because I'm pressed for time, there will be things like 
the stays that have to be maybe slightly altered. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to put every single bone in the stays pattern that I've got <laughs> because there are like literally probably about a hundred. So some artistic liberties are going to be taken but I think overall hopefully I will be able to evoke that 18th century feel while also maintaining the integrity of the character. So I think that's all I've got in terms of an introduction to the project. I'm hopefully going to be getting onto the shift as soon as possible so I should have that video out soon. I really really hope that you stick along for this project because I am so excited about it. I'm really looking forward to getting back into sewing and oh, just having a great time creating something fabulous hopefully. So thank you very much for watching this far <laughs> and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye! I'm sure there's something I forgot. Oh, the bloody microphone's done the thing again.